In this video, I'm going to give you a tour of SAS Studio, but first we're going to make sure that your SAS Studio environment is set up properly. So before you got to this video, you should have followed the instructions that have been posted online by your instructor in order to claim a SAS on demand for academics account. Make sure you follow the instructions very carefully, step by step. If you have any problems with claiming your SAS on demand for academics account, please see your instructor. So here you see that I'm in SAS Studio. In order to get here, I've logged into my SAS on demand for academics account, and I've been presented with a menu similar to this. I've then clicked on SAS Studio, and the following window has appeared. So what you're seeing now is SAS Studio, which is where you will do most of your work in SAS for the duration of the semester. So before we get started and I give you a tour, we need to have a couple of settings set up properly before you can continue. So first things first, at the top of the screen, you're going to click the More Application Options button next to the Help menu. Once you click that, click on Preferences. You then will want to go to the Code and Log option. In here, you'll see there's a menu option called Enable Autosave. Uncheck that box and then click the Save button in the lower right hand corner. Okay. Now we have to set up our library. If you follow the instructions to claim your SAS on demand for academics account properly, you will have already created a library. So let's check for it. On the left hand side, click the libraries accordion button. Here, you should see a library under my libraries named datasets. If you don't, go ahead and follow the following instructions. Click on the Server Files and Folders accordion and drill down until you get to My Shared File Links. Expand that and you should see the msle1 folder. And then expand that and you should see a Datasets folder. So you're going to right click on the Datasets folder and then select Create and then Library. Leave the name as is as Datasets and make sure you check the checkbox next to recreate this library at startup. It's very important to select this box. Then click OK. When the task is completed, you should be able to navigate to the library's accordion, expand my libraries, and you should now see the datasets library. OK, you're ready to go. So let me give you a brief tour of SAS Studio and how you can use the software properly. So on the left hand side, you've already noticed that we have a variety of accordion options. The three main areas you will spend most of your time in is libraries. This is how you will open a data set to browse it and look at the data set content. The tasks and utilities, which is where you will access most of the different statistical tests under the tasks menu that you will use in this course. And then occasionally, you'll access the server files and folders to access pre-designed SAST software programs in order to perform very specific statistical tests in the course. But most of your time will be spent in the tasks and utilities area, because this is where all of the statistical tests are located. So the way SAS Studio works is that you pretty much have two sides of the software. On the left-hand side, you select the task that you want to complete. And on the right hand side, you will set options for that task and also run that task to view the results. So let's do something really simple. Let's create a simple graph. So I know that my graphs options are under tasks and under the graphs menu. You will get used to which sub menus the different tasks are in and your instructor will help you with this. So for example, I know that most of the graphs that I would ever want to create are under the graph option. So I am going to select a simple histogram. I'll double click on the task and you'll see that on the right hand side of the screen now in my work area, it has created two new windows. So let's talk about these two new windows. You'll notice first of all that the browser can get a little bit crowded while you're working on things. So let's say you want this left hand side menu to disappear while you are doing your work for a particular task. All you have to do is go up here and click the Maximize View option. 
When I click that, the left-hand side menu goes away and I have a lot more room to work on the task at hand. If I wanna bring it back, I simply click on Exit Maximized View and it's back for me to select a new task. So I'll go ahead and go back into Maximize View. And you will notice that most tasks that you work on have different tabs at the top. For example, here I have a tab called Data and Appearance and Information. Almost every single one of the tasks has an Information tab and really all that that tab does is tells you what this task does and also gives you resources for help on that particular task if you would need it. So there's actually nothing you have to set up on that tab. It's just an informational tab. So you will also see here I have a data tab and I have an appearance tab. Now you'll notice next to the word data, I have an exclamation point and a red circle around it. So that means that this task is not ready to go. I can't run it and I need to do something to it in order for me to use it. You'll also notice that you can't run the task because if you look up here, the picture of the running man, this is your run icon and how you will run all SAS tasks. You'll notice it's grayed out and I can't click on it. It's because this task isn't ready to run and it's asking me for, to input certain values. So the first thing it's going to ask you is to pick a data set that you want to use for this task, right? We wanna create a histogram, well, of what data? So in order to pick a data set, you click on the box that says select a table and it will give you all of the libraries that you have available to select from. Most of the time in this class, you'll either be using a data set from the data sets library or from the SAS help library. SAS help is a library that comes with every installation of SAS and it comes with a whole bunch of different sample data sets for you to play around with. We strongly recommend you practice with different files in the SAS help folder so that you can get accustomed to using the tasks. So for this case, I'm going to use a data file in the SAS help library. So I'll expand SAS help and I'm going to pick the cars data file. This is a data file of different cars and qualities about the cars, such as their horsepower, gas mileage, and so on and so forth. You'll use the cars data set pretty often in the course. So I select cars and then I select okay. So you'll now notice in the data dropdown, it shows that it's going to perform this task on the CARS dataset in the SAS help library. So that's how datasets are named in SAS. You'll notice SAS help dot CARS is the dataset. So it's library dot name of the dataset. So in homework assignments, you will often see that your instructor has said, work on SAS help dot CARS or datasets dot class survey or SAS help dot class. So that's how you know which library it's in because of the library stated at the beginning of the name of the data set. So here I know that the cars data set is in the SAS help library. Okay, you'll also notice I still can't run this task because here the analysis variable has a little red star next to it. That means that I can't do anything until I fill in this required field. So it's asking, well, what column in the data set do you want to go ahead and create a histogram for? So I'll click the plus sign and SAS will display all of the columns that I can create a histogram with. Now remember, a histogram is for quantitative data only. So I'm only getting the columns in the data set that are quantitative, not categorical or qualitative. So let's say I want a histogram for the MSRP, the manufacturer's suggested retail price of the car. So I'll click on that and then I'll click OK. So you'll notice a few things that just happened and I want to mention what happened. So first of all, you'll notice that my MSRP variable or column went into the analysis variable section. You will notice that the red exclamation point next to data went away. And you'll also notice that my run icon is no longer grayed out and I can actually run this task now. So those things happened, but you'll also notice something happened on the right hand side. So you'll notice on the right hand side, as soon as I selected MSRP as our variable and clicked OK, a bunch of code got written on the right hand side. So this is the beauty of SAS Studio. You don't actually have to know how to write SAS code. That is, unless you want to learn. So pretty much everything in this course will use a pre-created task and you just have to point and click and select options. However, it's never a bad idea to take a look at the code that's being written on the right hand side. So this task is ready to go and I can now run it. But before I do, let me go to the Appearance tab to see what other options I can have for this particular data set. So if I go to the Appearance options, 
I can see that I have lots of different options for this particular histogram. I can add density curves. I can specify a particular number of bins for this particular histogram. I can set all types of options on the x axis and y axis. I can give the graph a title or a footnote, and I can even control the size of the graph. So sometimes your instructor will have you set options on different tasks, and in fact, very often they will. And you'll have to make sure that you do those successfully before you run the task in order for you to get the correct results. Here, these options are just appearance options, not really changing what this graph is doing per se. So I'm not going to select any other options, and I'm just going to go ahead and run this task. So now I can click the running man, which is our run icon, and SAS Studio will run the task and display the results. So here you can see I now have a histogram of the manufacturer's suggested retail price on the x-axis. And in this case, this is a cumulative frequency chart. So here I can very easily, if I wanted to, take this image and take a screenshot of it and put it in my homework assignment in Microsoft Word. And to do that, I can use a screenshot tool in my, on my computer. So uh, both Windows and Apple computers have different screenshot utilities that you can use to just take a screenshot of this particular graph. There's also another easy way to do this. You can hover over here where it says download results as an HTML file and click on that. And you'll notice my browser downloaded a file called histogramresults.html. So if I open that, here's the histogram alone in a window, and I can right click on it, copy the image, and now I can paste that in a Word document. So pretty easy. And then when I'm done with it, I can just close the tab in my browser. Now, what if you don't get results? What if for some reason you run it and you get no results and you're not getting what you expect? It's also a very good idea to take a look at the log tab on the right hand side after you run a task. You'll notice here there are three different types of logs, errors, warnings, and notes. Notes are nothing bad, usually just tells you that the program ran successfully and what the summary is of the results. But you want to make sure you don't have any errors or warnings. And if you do, you want to expand these sections and look and see, try to figure out what the error or warning was. However, this happens very rarely if you follow the instructions properly for every task. So really what you are most concerned with is the results tab. And again, very easy to take these results and export them or screenshot them and put them in your Microsoft Word document. So that's really how you're going to do every task in the class. There are a couple times where we don't use predefined tasks that are point and click. Sometimes we actually have to refer to a program and run a program, but we promise we'll keep that easy for you. That's pretty much it. If you have any specific questions as the course goes along as to how to use SAS Studio, you can ask your instructor, or you can visit the SAS documentation website at support.sas.com because SAS has really excellent documentation on all the software that they provide. All right, and then when you're done using SAS for the day or for your class, you simply click sign out in the upper right hand corner and it will warn you that all unsaved changes will be lost. Uh, it, and of course, if that's okay, you just go ahead and select yes and you are signed out of the SAS system. Thanks for watching.